SpaceX is making plans to test out unprecedented new technology in Earth's orbit. Some of this stuff we didn't even know they were working on, but we've just found out that SpaceX have their own extravehicular spacesuit that will be put to the test on a spacewalk later this year. And the person leading this mission, and paying for most of it, is a Silicon Valley tech billionaire. No, not Elon Musk. This spacewalk is being run by a whole other space-loving billionaire, because this is just a thing you can do nowadays. We're at a really cool point in the evolution of human spaceflight, where the major superpower governments of the world have lost their monopoly on outer space. It's not like a free-for-all or anything like that. There is still a significant barrier to entry, but as it stands in 2022, anyone with the money to pay the bill can go to space and do pretty much anything they want within the realms of international law and technical capability. And I'm not talking about Bezos and his pals doing little hops in the dildo rocket and coming down a minute later to fancy pins that they don't deserve and pats on the back from a dickhead in a cowboy hat. I'm thinking about events like the SpaceX Inspiration4 mission, where a group of civilians flew a Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon capsule into low Earth orbit and stayed there for two whole days before re-entering and splashing down in the ocean. A real-life astronaut experience. And the exceptionally rich person behind Inspiration4, Jared Isaacman, is also the exceptionally rich person behind this new series of SpaceX missions, the Polaris program. And, like we said off the top, this is about much more than a billionaire playing make-believe in space. These Polaris missions will be high-level technical demonstrations of new SpaceX inventions that will be literal game-changers. So, let's talk about it. This is the Space Race. So, the announcement of the Polaris program came in the morning on February 14th, and being sandwiched between the Super Bowl and Valentine's date night, it seems to have gone mostly unnoticed by the general public. Which is a shame, because there are some very important developments tied to Polaris that will have major consequences down the road. Like we said off the top, this is a brand new initiative led by billionaire tech entrepreneur Jared Isaacman. Jared served as mission commander for Inspiration4, because in addition to being a tech billionaire, he is also an experienced pilot who has performed in air shows for decades and in 2009 set a world record for circumnavigating the globe in a jet plane, completing one lap around the Earth in just under 62 hours. Jared's history of overachieving continues with Polaris, which boasts some very lofty goals. There are three missions on the Polaris docket, and the first named Polaris Dawn, is set to launch as early as the fourth quarter of 2022. Polaris Dawn will again use the Falcon 9 rocket and Crew Dragon capsule to take Jared and his crew into orbit, but this mission will take full advantage of the Falcon 9 and Dragon's maximum performance, flying higher than any SpaceX mission to date and endeavoring to reach the highest Earth orbit ever flown. The title is currently held by a mission called Gemini 11, where the spacecraft reached an apogee of 853 miles, or 1,373 kilometers. These kinds of orbits aren't done in a circle, they move in an oval shape, and the apogee is the furthest point in the oval away from the Earth. The closest point is the perigee. The perigee of Gemini 11 was 179 miles, or 288 kilometers in altitude, and the maximum velocity at perigee was 17,967 miles per hour. And just for comparison, the maximum operational altitude of the space shuttle was just 380 miles, or 610 kilometers. All of that happened in 1966. This was essentially a precursor mission to eventually reaching the moon. It's not clear just how much into space Polaris Dawn will go, but we know that the super long distance orbital path will take the crew through portions of the Van Allen radiation belt, where they will conduct research with the aim of better understanding the effects of spaceflight and space radiation on human health. The Van Allen belt is an interesting bit of science. 
It is a zone of charged particles from the sun, highly radioactive material that is blown towards the Earth by solar winds. These are captured and held around the planet by the Earth's magnetic field. This belt isn't round or even. Its shape is affected by the magnetic poles of the Earth. This effect of trapping the energetic particles is what protects our atmosphere from being blown away by solar wind. That's probably what happened to Mars at some point in its life. The planet lost its magnetism and the atmosphere dissipated into space. So it's very good that we have this. But it also means that our planet is surrounded by dense radiation and we've never really taken the opportunity to study what effect that exposure would have on a person. Obviously, we don't want to hurt anyone, so they won't be exposed for long periods, their orbital path will dip into the belt and then come back out. But there's more. At approximately 500 kilometers above the Earth, the crew of Polaris Dawn will attempt the first ever commercial extravehicular activity with SpaceX designed spacesuits, a spacewalk in other words. The entire crew of four people will be using the yet unseen SpaceX EVA suits to survive and work in the vacuum of space. Since the Dragon has no airlock, the entire capsule will depressurize for the walk and then repressurize again afterwards. These new EVA suits are said to be an evolution of the Crew Dragon flight suits that we all know and love. The development of this suit and the execution of the EVA will be important steps towards a scalable design for spacesuits on future long duration missions for SpaceX. So where to start? I mean, this is a very big deal for many reasons. There hasn't been a new functioning spacesuit design in literally decades. There is the NASA prototype suit for the Artemis mission, and it's a great suit, but it's not slated for action until at least 2025. At this point, and the production of the thing has become an absolute nightmare that seems to be on the verge of total collapse and failure. All of the EVA suits that are in use right now by NASA or anyone else are based on the extravehicular mobility unit NASA introduced in 1981 for the space shuttle program. Yes, there have been some evolutions on the design over the years, but for the most part, it's been the same spacesuit up there for 40 years. And SpaceX is about to change that. We don't know much right now about what this suit might be. We can see a little rendering of an astronaut floating outside of the Dragon capsule on the Polaris website. We can see that they have a gold tinted visor and an umbilical connection to the ship. That looks very similar to the current SpaceX Dragon astronauts. It's become an iconic look since the first crewed Falcon 9 launch in 2020. They look kind of like a Power Ranger. It's very cool. But those suits that we know today are not the same thing as extravehicular spacesuits. The current Dragon suits can be pressurized with nitrogen and oxygen in the case of an emergency, but they're very much a last line of defense piece of equipment. If it comes down to the point where that suit is actually keeping the astronaut alive, they are in very, 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 very bad trouble already. The new SpaceX suit will be a first line of defense against the incredibly harsh environment of space. It will also have to promote dexterity and maneuverability so that the crew can perform their tasks. It's a very fine balancing act of form and function. The Dragon capsule itself introduces some extra challenges here. The hatch of a Dragon is relatively small. It's small enough that the NASA EMU suit with the big backpack thing just doesn't fit through the hatch. So it is a necessity that the SpaceX suits remain very slim and low profile. And lastly, the Polaris Dawn crew will be the first to test Starlink's laser-based communications in space, providing valuable data for future space communication systems necessary for missions to the moon, Mars, and beyond. The idea here is to utilize the new optical laser-based communication system that has been integrated into all new Starlink satellites launched in September 2021. This eliminates the need for each satellite to communicate with a ground-based station. The lasers will allow instant communication between satellites in orbit. There is nothing faster than light moving through a vacuum. So this new communications method will far exceed any kind of radio system we have used in the past, and this opens up a world of new possibilities. 
and all of that was mission one. As far as the second mission for Polaris, that is still up in the air. All we really know is that the plan will evolve based on the results of the first mission, something that will build on whatever they discover on Polaris Dawn. But it's the third Polaris mission that is particularly interesting. This is already being billed as the first crewed flight for the Starship. This is the next generation of SpaceX rocket that is currently under testing and development. This is the ship that will take people back to the moon, and this is the ship that will eventually take people to Mars, and it's going to do some other pretty amazing things in between. This is the largest, most powerful flying machine ever constructed, and this rich dude and his crew will be the first to ride it. We don't know when that will happen or what the mission parameters will look like, but in an interview with Tim Dodd at the Everyday Astronaut, Jared Isaacman confirmed that the Starship will be crewed for the entire duration of the mission, so the ship will launch and land with people on board. This is significantly different than the plan for the Lunar Starship that will bring people to the surface of the moon on the Artemis 3 mission. That ship will be uncrewed when it launches from the Earth and will only ever land on the moon with people inside, which is much, much easier to do than landing on the Earth. The procedure for bringing a starship back to Earth is something else. First, it is going to belly flop into the atmosphere in the same way as the old space shuttle. Then, unlike the shuttle, which became an airplane once it re-entered, the starship will continue to fall just like a skydiver until it's very close to the ground. At that point, the Raptor engines reignite and use a motorized gimbal system to push the ship back into a vertical orientation and then slow the rocket down enough that it can finally be caught out of the air by a set of robotic arms attached to a gigantic tower. That is going to be one hell of a ride. So this is definitely a mission to keep our eyes on. All three of these flights will be historic events and the first launch is already coming up soon. We're finally getting back to the true spirit of space exploration, boldly going where no one has gone before. And it's gonna be really cool. Let us know in the comments what you're most excited to see, the first SpaceX spacewalk or the first crewed flight of the Starship. And when does that Starship flight happen? If everything goes the way that Elon Musk is saying it will go, I'd optimistically put a bet on 2025, but we'll see. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.